Trading for a living comes with more downsides than most people can imagine. Things that can break down even the most passionate trader. In the last episode, we talked about the positives of professional trading. We've now arrived at a more interesting part, one rarely spoken of publicly. For rarely if ever do we see professional traders, real ones or not, talk about the negative sides of trading. Quite the opposite. You know, I'm helping thousands of my students all over the world live the exact lifestyle I'm living. Thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands, literally spending crazy money on LV, Gucci. They tend to present it as a pleasant walk in the park, as something anybody can do. Just buy their services and you're ready to rake in the millions. If you're ready to take it to the next level and potentially make millions of dollars with me, take the course at Now the point of this episode is not to crush any dreams, but rather to add balance to this polarized subject. The purpose is to give a truthful depiction of trading reality so that anyone who takes up trading or takes their current trading to the next level knows what lays ahead. You have to be really careful if you're going to be a day trader because it usually turns into nightmares. For as glamorous as certain professions may be, none come without continuous hassles. But here's the brilliant part. If our ultimate reward is greater than the price we have to pay for it, we then know we have found something of value. We will then have the fuel we need to push through any difficulties that will inevitably come our way. However, if we lack true passion in a competitive field like trading, we're doomed before we've even begun. Throughout my professional online poker career, trialing headaches were constantly thrown under my proverbial poker bus, with the sole ambition to make my way to the top a miserable one. The only thing would make it worse if a nine comes up on the river. Right. <laughs> During the first five years, however, when still being fresh and hungry, I valued the very thought of being a poker professional so highly that any headaches that arose even felt pleasurable. They felt more like a necessary part of my poker education that would further harden me into the stone cold poker pro stereotype that I've always dreamt of becoming. <laughs> And that was all the fuel I needed to push through. Eventually, however, my values changed. As a result of this, I failed to appreciate the very rewards which I would have recently gone through fire for. All of a sudden, any minor bumps on the road felt like insurmountable problems. Mountains to be climbed by a fish. But here's where things get complex and interesting. It was rather a gradual change of personal values that caused me to stop wanting what I once desired. And no matter how passionate you may be, if you ever were to make trading your profession, you are very likely to experience the things I'm about to outline. Some will emerge quickly, whereas others will emerge with age and maturity. Now, let me level with you, and I'll be brutally honest. As fond as I am of trading, turning it into a living was initially an extension to my poker career. It's all very simple, for moving money around for value is the only life I know. But the older I get, the more friction I feel from the negative sides of trading. Even to the point where I secretly entertain the thought of someday doing something else. You'll see why soon. So what then are those downsides, and are they really that severe? As much as anyone can shrug off some short-term dripping on your forehead, Given enough time, those same drips will grind a hole into your head. And that's what they're in the midst of doing to me. Now here are the things that will ultimately grind a hole into any sensible trading professional's head. 1. Stress. Your initial reaction to this might very well be that most industries and jobs are stressful in this day and age. And that is absolutely true. For most jobs with any level of ambition come with their fair share of stress. But there is a difference. Personally, I'm a very stress-tolerant person. It's a trait that I've accumulated through years and years of trials. Being stress-tolerant is a fundamental necessity if you ever want to become a professional trader or poker player. But being stress-tolerant doesn't necessarily mean you don't feel stress. It means you're good at handling it. He doesn't scream. 
few situations ever arise in which I lose my head due to stress. Having said that, I have had countless experiences of waking up in the middle of the night with a heart racing at 220 beats per minute due to severe losses. A famous Swedish poker player who should remain anonymous once said to me that he had regular nosebleeds due to the pressure he felt. Stress affects us differently depending on several factors such as biological wiring, upbringing, history, personal experiences and what stage of our life we're currently in. Taking risks when you're 18, for example, is radically different from taking the very same risks when you are 34, particularly financial and career risks. The typical 18-year-old has little to nothing to lose from such risks and is often even encouraged. Your adult life has barely yet begun and you're spared from any major responsibilities. You're even expected to screw up and learn some valuable life lessons. However, when you are 34 like I am, exposing yourself to unnecessary financial risks is rather destructive when you want to establish a solid life foundation. Being a married man, I want to provide security to my wife in every field. It's my duty and my deepest wish. And that security is hard to impossible to find in poker or trading unless you're a made man. As in financially set for life. Thus being at the mercy of statistical variance, black swans and never ever being certain that your net worth will increase over a given period of time, stress automatically inflicts your mind and is constantly there lurking about in the background like a roaming beast. I couldn't begin to imagine how much stress I would feel right now if my wife and I were to have kids. I guess you'll be needing your pay. I give you the big half. For unless we'd be at least semi-set for life by then, I'd feel financial stress and uncertainty every hour of the day. But here's the ironic paradox. Even if we were to have enough, money would still be a stress factor. For the more money you have, especially as a trader, the more responsibilities it inflicts on you. Rather than being my fifth and sensible priority, which it is today, it would automatically move up to the top and rule my life. And once you put money at the top, it will always stress you, no matter how much you have. In this sense, money-driven professions easily end up as a catch-22. A lose-lose situation. 2. Meaninglessness. Now, stress is peculiar in the sense that it attacks on several flanks at the same time. For it's just not the stress from risking lots of money at any given point, but also the existential stress you feel from the ultimate meaninglessness of trading all day long. Simply put, trading is nothing more than moving money around and hoping for it to grow at the expense of someone else. For yes, trading is a zero-sum game, whatever some people may claim to the contrary. But don't take my word for it. Now, two of the major reasons why humankind has survived and thrived to the very top of the nutritional chain are our intelligence and our unparalleled ability to work in teams. <laughs> Teamwork and helping out the tribe are therefore core elements to our programming. We have structured our societies in a way where each and everyone is expected and required to contribute in their own ways. The despicable attacks on easy targets, even targeting a woman and her child who has to run across a busy road to escape. It is therefore well known psychologically that people feel happier and more sane when they contribute to the community, when they are needed and appreciated for their contributions. It's one of those win-win situations where 1 plus 1 equals 3. For this reason it's common for traders, poker players or anybody who works in non-value adding industries to ultimately face a reality check. To most of these people who possess at least a basic level of empathic functioning, a time will come when they begin to question what type of value they supply themselves. And when they realize they add no value to society whatsoever, a seed of emptiness is immediately sown within. And the more they continue to go against this 
this survival level programming of helping the tribe, what they really do is to water and nourish that inborn emptiness to ensure its continuous growth. This very message took me a long time to understand myself. I thought I was immune to the impact of this universal wisdom, but six years into my professional poker career, I slowly began to feel like a separate entity to society, to the tribe. One that was abundant, and when zooming out of poker, I felt a kind of confused disgust. There I was, spending an unhealthy portion of my life playing a game. A game. Three gamers take eight hour shifts and play video games 24 hours a day, non-stop. And whether it makes you money or not, it's still nothing short of meaningless. We get compensation for that work. I mean, it's, it's a job just like anything else. Like anything else, if done with moderation, all is good. But once something fundamentally meaningless takes up too much of your time and focus, any sensible person will begin to rot from the inside. Three, money, money, money. The problem with trading is that it automatically puts money up there as a prime focus in life. You may think this is not that big of a deal, that it's normal, and even something quite healthy, to try to establish a sound financial ground in life. And yes, of course it is. But this is typically where the discussion begins to confuse people as it shuffles in irrelevant fruits and begins to mix apples and oranges. For needing money and craving it are two completely different things. Craving money is the love of money that automatically puts it on a pedestal, whether you want it or not. And once it's heightened to a level of worship, it becomes a curse that clouds your mind from life's true values. I've been there myself, and being awakened from this treacherous hypnosis is the greatest relief I've yet come to experience. You know, people ask, like, why rich people aren't as happy, and I just think it's because they've upped the bar so far that only the you know, best things satisfied. For whilst love in general expands the more you love, loving money on the contrary is a black hole that comes at the expense of the other things you love. Hence, loving money is a love paradox that gives your stress and meaninglessness free reign to grow. And if you think I'm exaggerating, just take a look at the world today, the very one run by the worship of money, power and status. Now, how do you think that's going? An antidepressant use surged almost 400% from 1994 to 2008. As I said in the presidential suite episode in December, linked to at the end of this episode, we are in for the worst series of events since World War II. And to many people, whatever is coming is well deserved. It's the type of event that will once and for all bring morals back. As you can tell, money is certainly a complex subject and one that I will return to many times to come. Now, don't get me wrong, trading or playing poker for a living is great for some time. But I cannot stress it many times enough that it is the type of profession that only works for a limited period of your life. After that, it will redeem with interest what it has lent to you. For once you proceed to trade for a living after your teenage infatuation thereof has expired, trading for a living is no longer a gift. It's a loan that needs to be paid back with interest. Ask any alcoholic or drug addict what I mean by this. For trading or playing poker for a living for too long will, pardon my French, fuck you up. Oh, aggressive! No, because I said pardon my French, it makes it less aggressive. If you're gonna say pardon my French, then you should be swearing in French. Right? Yeah. The reason why it's nearly impossible to maintain a healthy 9 to 5 type of relationship to trading or poker is because they're both so competitive that in order to make it, you need to turn it into a professional lifestyle as opposed to just a profession. And once you turn anything into a professional lifestyle, you are your work. And once you are your work, you will be more vulnerable to these three risks as they are likely to be in direct conflict with your own personal values. For these negative sides will at some point come to pass to anybody who turns trading or poker into a professional lifestyle. So you want to become a professional trader? My only question to you is, do you want it enough?